Alright guys, I'm just showing you a quick tutorial video uh, on how to truly use the Tracker Motion Analysis software. In your previous assignment, uh, we used this. It was a real underutilization of the um, usefulness of this program. And, and that's in essence what your next uh, assignment is based on. So in this one, you guys will be able to choose uh, one of two videos to analyze. Um, over and above a video that you will uh, record yourselves and analyze then further. Um, how it works is uh, again just click on file, open file uh, and in this case you will open the video that you want to assess and analyze. Uh, just give it a couple of uh, moments to load. Uh, these videos are recorded at 100 Hertz uh, meaning that you've got uh, basically a hundred pictures for every one second of movement. Um, in this particular video you'll be analyzing, or well, I'll be going through, a um, clean and squat jerk movement. Um, so you can see here it's just taking a little while to load. So let's give it a few more seconds. Uh, then I'll show you how to set it up and the kind of things that we'll do um, in terms of the analysis. Uh, there'll be quite a lot of things, uh, so I'll go through it fairly quickly um, and then I'll show you how to extract some of the more useful information in the second video. So the first thing that you want to do is to um, again just crop the video to the area of interest. So since I had to just start this video myself, uh, I just want to cut out the portion where I'm walking to the camera. Uh, then you have the setup component and then just before the movement starts, um, is where you'll pause the video. All right, so around about there. Just remember, just right click on it and we'll set that as the starting frame. Uh, then we can just fast forward. Uh, so first of all, I'm just gonna clean and then there'll be a squat jerk component. And then after that, uh, so just before there's full lockout, so around about there, uh, reason being is because this top part of the bot is actually going to go off the screen so we can just stop it there for now we'll set that as the end frame perfect and we'll just take it back to the beginning all right so the first thing that we have to do is just set up our coordinate axes so our reference frame is going to start uh, you can set it up pretty much wherever but i kind of like using the um, start of the wherever the bar is as my reference um, at the start of my reference frame uh, was the origin of my reference frame if I want to put that a little bit more accurately uh, then I can get rid of that I have to set up um, the distances so you have to use the calibration um, tool and <coughs> what we know is the uh, diameter of the bar uh, of the plates um, so just make sure you zoom in yet you get the edges in quite nicely and you want to kind of align it with the center of the plate so I'll just move this up a little bit and make sure that these lengths are perfect all right so the diameter of the plate is 45 centimeters or 0 0.45 meters remember all our units are going to be in meters press enter and then I can get rid of that perfect I'll zoom back out again so you can just hit the control button and use the scroll option on your mouse zoom back out okay <coughs> now what is it that I want to track there'll be a couple of things uh, you'll see I've got some markers on the hip knee and ankle we'll track those and I'm going to track the motion of the bar itself So I'm going to start off with a new point mass and the point mass I'm going to rename the bar uh, you can call it whatever you want to but just it makes it easier to reference things a little bit later on now to track the bar Remember, you're going to press Control Shift, and you'll see that my mouse pointer changes shape. Control Shift, and then just over this uh, lateral edge of the bar. Then this uh, auto tracking option is going to pop up, and in essence, what it's going to do is going to search for this throughout the entire duration of uh, the clip. So you, you can see it's created a template, and in essence, in each frame, it's going to search for that same template. So we can just press Search here and hopefully it'll do a fairly good job of tracking it. You'll see over here it automatically digitizes each point uh, in time and we'll just let it do its thing. Uh, sometimes it can get stuck so if it doesn't find uh, this template in the next frame um, it automatically tries to find the closest match and it might ask you just to 
uh, accept or reject whatever it thinks it has found. But I try to set it up in such a way that it should be fairly clear um, and shouldn't have too much of a problem. Uh, you'll, you should find the same thing with the other two videos as well. All right, so the only problem with having 100 frames per second is the fact that it takes quite a while. Um, so let us do the thing. So you can see here I'm getting ready for the um, squat jerk. So there's a little dip before you dive underneath. Luckily the weight uh, wasn't too heavy so uh, it's fairly straightforward maneuver to do. Um, just if you do try this, make sure you've got plenty of shoulder mobility that you're nicely warmed up. Okay, so you can see just diving underneath it and then just a controlled descent. Okay, and then it's just on the way back up and then you'll see I'm not going to reach the turtle top because we um, cropped the video at that point in time. Perfect. Alright, <coughs> so that's the first thing that you guys will do. Uh, then we'll play it back to the beginning of the video. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is to track uh, the ankle. You can see here right now I can't see the ankle. So what I'll do is I'll get to the point uh, where I can see the ankle. Since I'm driving through the floor, um, the ankle's not going to move too much. So if I hover, the same way that you guys did in the first break, if I just hover over where this ankle marker is, uh, you'll see in the bottom uh, left-hand corner, there's the XY coordinates. It says 0 0.15 for the X and 0 0.04 for the Y. So now when I take it back to the beginning, um, all I have to do basically uh, is, first of all, create a new point marker point mass. This one I'm going to call the ankle and I'm also going to change the color. Uh, let's make it blue so we can see it nicely. Okay, so <coughs> in essence what I'm going to do is hover my mouse over those x, y coordinates that I said just now, 0, 0.15 and 0, 0.04. So an x 0, 0.15 and then a little bit up down and then a little bit across. Alright, then I hit the shift button and you'll see my mouse pointer changes again uh, and in essence I'm just going to click through um, each frame until I can get to the point where I can see the uh, ankle marker and you should see it pop up in a second just as um, these plates clear and you can see that I'm still clicking on the ankle marker. So now once I can see it clearly I can press Control Shift and then hit the auto tracker and just say search and it should do the rest for me fairly straightforward. So again now we'll just wait until it um, runs its course, make sure that um, it captures it the entire time, it's doing a fairly good job. So again you just have to wait until it goes through all the frames. Uh, in that specific sequence. So th again, this just becomes a little bit of a um, laborious process, but the nice part is you don't have to do too much, right? You're just kind of letting it auto track the entire time, uh, which is quite handy. The reason we're doing this is <coughs> uh, in the next part of the analysis, we want to try and add a goniometer in here that we can get an idea of the uh, knee joint angle. Um, that might give us some useful information in terms of how deep the squat was. Um, how quickly the person was extending or flexing or whatever the case may be so uh, during the analysis component of all of this there's a lot of information we can extract right um, for now we're just basically trying to uh, get it to that point okay so we're going to do the same thing that we're doing for the ankle now for the knee and for the hip And uh, I guess what you guys can do is while you playing this video is just fast forward this section. I can't really do it right now. Uh, I kind of just have to be patient. Cool. There we 
we go. All right, then we're going to create another one, another point mass. Uh, this time we're going to call this one the me. Again, I'm just going to change its color. Uh, maybe use something that's like purple. Uh, again, in this one, I can't uh, quite see it. I'm going to have to use a little bit of guesswork. But in essence, I can see the top of the knee over here and the back of the knee over here. So um, using an educated guess, the uh, point of intersection is just over here by my forearm. Again, what I'll do is I'll hit the shift button and then just kind of click through. The only thing now is that the knee does move uh, a tiny bit. So I kind of have to just try and stay with it. Uh, the only time that I can use the auto tracker on this is once uh, the bar has been cleaned. So it takes a little bit longer, but it's not a train smash at all. Right, it goes fairly quickly. Uh, just keep on that X as much as you can, especially once the uh, plate is in the way. But it's one of the reasons why I'm not getting you guys to assess and analyze it. I think it might be subject to uh, too many errors at this point in time. So you can see this is the difficult part here is the knees clearly shifting. And it's just a matter of trying to stay with it as much as possible. All right, so once we're here, now we can use the auto tracker. Okay, so that's control and shift again, then press search. Uh, once we're at the end, you just got to do one more joint, and that is the uh, hip. So I'm going to change the name. I'll call it the hip marker. Again, change the color. Maybe something a little bit more green. Again, that becomes quite visible. Um, again, here I can order track in the beginning, and I'll stop it just before the bar gets in the way. Uh, so I'm just going to hit Control Shift and just get this edge portion here. Uh, you can see here it picks up quite nicely and then I press search and let it do its thing just until the bar gets uh, in the way. So around right there. I'll stop it then I'll just do it manually. Again, I can see the outer edge of the glute there, so I'm going to just try and keep it consistent. Alright, 
and then from here on out I can go manual again and search perfect close that and then the last part is to go to a measuring tool we're going to use a protractor um, let's call this the knee joint again I'm going to I'm going to change its color um, over here I'm going to make it yellow so it's clearly visible um, <coughs> now what we can do is we can attach these points automatically so what I'm going to go here is uh, say attach for the vertex, that's the uh, that's this component over here. I'm gonna say attach that to the knee. Then, uh, once it decides to catch a bit of a wake up, um, the arm I'm going to attach to the ankle. Just wait for that to load. And then the base I'm going to attach to the hip. Uh, the other clips are a little bit shorter, so it'll take less time. It'll go a little bit quicker. So just bear with me here. All right, once it's done that, then we can close. You'll notice this is right at the end. I'm just going to take it back to the beginning. And what you'll see now is now we've got this knee flexion. <coughs> um, this is slightly different to what you guys might be used to. Uh, in, in other words, we normally take uh, full extension as zero and then have, we'll have flexion from there. Um, this takes full extension as 180, so it's just uh, the opposite of what we normally do. But if I play the video through, what you'll see now is that the joint angle is automatically updating you can see that the flexion is increasing and as it moves towards 180 doesn't quite get to 180 not fully extended right lots of technical uh, elements in here that we can unpack uh, later on but it's just nice to see that this is now an automatic process right once we've digitized these points uh, it's fairly straightforward to get this uh, all this information is updating here on a continual basis this is what we'll use in our analysis later on um, again, it's just trying to teach you now the methods. There's one more thing that we have left to do here. And um, I'll pause it for now because I can see that that's working quite nicely. I'll take it back to the beginning. What we are interested in in a movement like this, for example, is to say how far at any point in time is the bar from the hip joint, right? Um, so in order to get that information, which we'll only be able to do in the analysis later on, 
is we'll have to insert something here which is called a measuring tape which we'll see here basically this is going to tell me the distance between any two points but not the horizontal distance right that's what I'm interested in uh, is how far is this from the hip joint for but horizontally you'll see the way in which this works uh, let's just call this uh, bar to hip distance uh, again, I'll try and change this color so it's a little bit more visible. Maybe make it uh, like a bright red. Maybe that'll work better. Uh, again, I can attach these points. Uh, one end I'm going to connect to the bar, and the other end, obviously, I'm going to connect to uh, to the hip. I'll give it a second or two. Any time. There we go. And then the second end, uh, I'll attach to the hip. So what you see now, it'll just connect a basically a straight line from uh, bar to hip, but that's obviously not what I'm interested in. Not the straight line, just the, or in, in another way to think of it is your resultant distance. I'm interested in the X component of that distance. So you can see here, I can close that now. So you'll see in essence, although it's not 100% correct because there's a depth component here, right? Uh, this is closer to the camera than my hip is. But again, those are some technical elements that we can deal with for now. It says that it's about 62 odd centimeters, right? From the bar, center of the bar to the center of my hip. Um, and what you'll see now is that obviously that changes at any instant in time. Right, but notice this X component is going to come less and less and less and less and less. Uh, what's nice here is it gives me the angle that this line is relative to the horizontal, which is really cool. Okay, so I can see that that's working nicely. So I'll pause that, take it back to the beginning, and I think for now we've got all the elements that we need. So I'll leave the video there, and I'll see you guys in the next video.